Well, there are so many victims now to talk about. 26 innocent lives lost. And Dan, I know you have more on that. Bianca, yes, we now know their names, in fact, this morning. They are so young, all in the first grade, all of them shot more than once by a semi-automatic rifle. The medical examiner saying, mercifully, death was swift. He added this is the worst case he had ever seen. ABC's Amy Robach is back with more on this, and this is the hardest part. And Dan, it's, it's so true. Every day we learn more about the victims, and this story just gets harder and harder. This morning we know the names. We see the little faces of those sweet little boys and girls, and the teachers who love them, and the parents who so desperately miss them. Twelve little girls and eight little boys, all only in first grade, and the teachers who tried to save them. On Saturday, photos and details of lives cut short started to emerge. The worst um, that I know of any of my colleagues having seen. Noah Ponzer had just turned six. His twin sister survived the shooting, but Noah did not. Seven-year-old Grace McDonnell, family members telling ABC News, our daughter Grace was the love and light of our family. Words cannot adequately express our sense of loss. Anna Marquez Green, the daughter of a jazz musician. Her father says they're struggling to work through this nightmare. Catherine Hubbard's family said in a statement Saturday, we ask that you continue to pray for us and the other families who have experienced loss in this tragedy. Jesse Lewis was looking forward to making gingerbread houses in school that day. He was in Victoria Soto's class. She, just 27 years old, her family says she was shielding some of her first graders when she died. Lauren Rousseau had just started as a full-time teacher in September. She was having the best year of her life, her mother said. Mary Sherlock, the school psychologist. In a statement Saturday, her family said that Mary felt like she was doing God's work by helping children. She headed towards the shooter when the assault began. Joined by the school's beloved principal, Dawn Hawksprung, a mother herself, it is now believed she turned on the PA system when the shooting started so others could be warned of the danger that had invaded their school. It is so difficult to find the right words after seeing how much this community has lost. But somehow, some way, the father of little Emily Parker found those words when he spoke to cameras outside of a Newtown church. As the deep pain begins to settle into our hearts, we find comfort reflecting on the incredible person that Emily was and how many lives that she was able to touch in her short time here on earth. Emily was bright, creative, and very loving, as those are the gifts that were given to her by her Heavenly Father. The strength that she gave us and the example that she showed us is remarkable. She is an incredible person, and I'm so blessed to be her dad. I don't know how to get through something like this. My wife and I don't understand how to process all of this and how to how to get our lives going i'm not mad because i have to make sure that i use this event to do what i can to do whatever i can uh, to one make sure that my family and my wife and my daughters are taken care of and that if there's anything that i can do to help anybody at any time anywhere that i'd be willing to do that what an incredibly strong and brave and courageous man. My hat is certainly off to him as a parent. I don't think that I could do that. And covering this story as a parent, I know you've got three little girls, extraordinarily difficult. It is incredibly difficult. School is closed here in Newtown tomorrow, but everyone around the country, every parent out there who is going to take their children to school tomorrow, it is going to be a fundamentally different experience because there is a fear factor and, and there's just this sense that you don't know. Uh, that elementary school isn't sacred anymore. It isn't a safe place anymore that we once thought it would be. And I think a lot of parents are going to hug their kids a lot more tightly tomorrow and tell them they love them before they send them off. Indeed. And, uh taking things not so much for granted anymore. Absolutely. I know later in the broadcast you're going to be back with more about how to talk to children about this. It's a big struggle. Amy, excellent reporting. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Appreciate it.